What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today we're going to be going over a hybrid trap arrangement. <laughs> What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today we're gonna be going over how to put together something like this. In the trap, trapping to increase capital. In the trap, trapping to increase capital. In the trap, in the, in the, in the trap, trapping, in the trap, trapping to increase capital. In the trap, trapping to increase capital. In the trap, trapping to increase capital. In the trap, in the, in the, in the trap Trapping, in the trap Trapping to increase capital In the trap So first things first, um, if you are a producer who doesn't really um, fuck with any genres outside of, you know, just like regular hip hop and stuff like that, um, this might seem, you know, like a whole different um, arena to you. But I happen to enjoy um, like like how over the past like five or six years, um, a lot of different artists have just been t taking electronic music and and just and just doing whatever they want and not really conforming. So when um you know when when they started doing like trap and then putting growls in it and 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 doing like EDM drop formats, I thought that shit was awesome. Um, and it's some it's something I fuck with personally, and I don't like see a lot of I've I've never seen a tutorial about arrangement on these things, and um, so the way that the way that i put something like this together is i can't like, like when i make a beat like this i can't approach it like how i do a regular hip-hop beat where it's just like all right you know pretty much you build the hook and then you and then you and then you you copy and paste it and you strip away parts parts of the hook and then all the sounds play during the hook and that's your beat this this is this is a little it was a lot different um so what I like to do is I like to enable the arranger and that's uh that's this button right here. And when you open the arranger, what what that does is it gives you the ability to be in to be in this this top track up here. You can go ahead and double click 
a section and then drag it out. So say I wanted to make this section here, right? You can right click on it and then double click here and rename it. So you could call this, you know, hook one or whatever. It gives you the ability to change the color of that section. Then say if, if say I wanted, uh, you know, drop four to come before drop three, rather than, rather than highlight everything and miss something, you just stick it over. Oh my God. That's not what I wanted to do. You just stick it over here and it'll, and boom, it's, it's there. And if you don't like the way that sounds, then you could drop it over here. So it's a really powerful feature that gives you the option of moving stuff around really quick and efficiently. Now, the way that I lay the stuff out also, when, I'm, when you're in inspect, you can also hit I and then bring up this section right here and, you know, do the same thing move sections around you know so it's pretty dope this is I'm, i mean this is one of the uh this is like one of the doper um features that came out when they released studio one three that i was really excited about and i know i don't show it a lot in, the, in my tutorials but th this is the way that i use it um what i do is i'll create different templates for for my music and for example, when I'm making a track like this, I have a template loaded up that will pretty much these these parts will already be up here in these colors. And the reason why I choose to color it differently and stuff like that is because each section having to, like the drops being dark red, I know that those are the drops. I know that when I see bridge one and bridge two being a different color, it mentally connects with me and it lets me know like, all right, this needs to be different than this. And that doesn't, um, you know, it might sound like common sense, but you know how it is when you're creating and you get stuck in a loop mode. Sometimes you need to remind yourself. So what this does for me personally is it gives my, is it gives me a sense of organization. Like, where I might start is I might start with building. I'll either start with building drop one or drop two. Like the the way that my mind goes about uh, doing, you know, this for for my particular style is during my first drop, I will have more um, of a of a of a more of like a traditional trap sound with you know with plucks and horns um synths and stuff like that but when it comes to drop two that's where i take kind of this this uh melody and um harmonic bass that i've created here and then i flip it to to a more aggressive um growly screechy type of bass synth or um you know a, a different vocal chop melody or something so it's gonna be it's gonna be something like what i did here which which would be something that would work for a rap song and then boom drop it into you know drop it into something just a lot you know more far out and left field and i'm just trying to be as creative as possible here um once i've created these two sections then i'll go ahead and i'll say okay but like by this point i i will have a melody and everything so i'll say okay here's here's my intro melody you know what i'm saying i'm gonna do that um, I'm going to I'm going to add a bass down here. I'm going to I'm going to need to find a couple risers. And the way that the way that this works is you have um, this this uh, these songs, they follow a, a specific type of energy signature. Um, I've created an energy curve for this one. Right. So the way that the way that I kind of lay these out is I'll start with, you know, I'll start with my intro. It'll have a riser in it. Once it gets, you know, once I get to the, to halfway through this, this intro, halfway through this riser piece, I'm going to have some type of percussion, whether it be kick, snare, a four on the floor clap, or, you know, something like that. Then once I, once I get past that part, I'm going to, I'm going to suck the energy back out. I'm going to remove the percussion. I'm going to add like an impact. So, you know, like, you know, like an impact that's like, bah! and it's going to let you know, okay, this is a different part of the song. I'm going to keep all the same melodic elements, but the trick that I use to get this, um, this energy to, to pump back up is I'll, is I'll go on my, on my main bus, um, 
put like um, the uh, sound shifter plugin from Waves, automate the semitones, and then and then push it up two octaves. So the whole um, the whole master bus track goes up two octaves, and that's what and that's what kind of treats this section as a um, as a total riser. When you do that, you're 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 creating it's it's a it's like a double tension and release, which is which is a which is a pretty advanced technique in in arrangement because you know like when you're when you're trying to create a tension like you might put a drop on your last snare and then it comes back and all the sounds come in and mentally you're relieved when you hear that next part is because you were set up for that. Um, working with working with this type of this type of music like when you're doing hybrid trap the whole um you know and like festival type of music the whole point is to create multiple points of tension and release i mean you're the people that that you're um targeting this music to is drug people man you know what i'm saying it's people who are who are high as fuck that want to just feel an amazing experience you know and they're and they're super zoned out so when you get um when when they're in an altered state of of you know of, of consciousness and then they're used to their regular um format of music and you can go ahead and take that format but instead of you know instead of instead of giving them um you know the satisfaction of putting the drop here you add another point of tension now you're kind of throwing them off and then when they get the drop that's how you get that reaction of like whoa bro you just blew my mind because i thought the drop was coming but then it was another riser and then the drop came in sick like that's that's how that shit happens it's it's just a matter of of you as a producer because the people who are the, the the people who are creating this stuff, they're not high when they're creating it. It is extremely hard to be efficient and arrange at a high level, um, you know, if you're intoxicated, and uh, you know, if, you know, if, if you read about, you know, any of the best people in this genre, you'll see like it's it's a completely different per it's a completely different perspective than what you might imagine them. You know, especially especially if y'all are festival people, like y'all already know. You know what I'm saying? If you've been you know, if you're from Miami and you, you fuck with Ultra, you know what I mean, or you or you're in like you, you go out to Vegas, you're in Orlando, you know, or up or or, or you know, you, you've been to like a de a mad decent block party or some shit like that. Like you know, bro. So once you have your first drop, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna raise the energy in the second you know in the second part. And the way that the way that I did it in this song is I just added like this super aggressive snare roll. And again, just bumping the energy up. It's it, it's it's something you want to think about. Like add hi hats, add a snare roll, add a different variance to your um, melody or something like that. But once you do that, you're gonna want to drag the energy down again. Still have still have that riser effect, and then drop two. That is, as opposed to as opposed to like a, a pop song where the energy, the highest point of the energy, culminates at the end of the song. If you notice here, we actually have we we actually have the lowest sustained energy at the end. Right here on drop two, that's where you're gonna have your most aggressive drop that's where you're gonna have just the craziest shit going on like that is where you go hammer time fam um so in 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 my example you hear that's a, that, that's where the growls come in that's where the sample changes up that's where you um that's where you start to get a uh um just the just the whole it, it's the same song but it's a whole different feeling everything feels even more aggressive then when you come down to uh th this section i call bridge one or bridge two i mean it could be called you could call it whatever build again or build one or build two but you're doing the same thing you're, you're going you're going ahead and it's it's kind of a you're redoing the effect that you did in the intro okay but you're shortening it up instead of 12 bars you're going to do 
you're gonna do you're gonna do eight of it and you just fi- you just find a way to go up i the way that i do it is bridge one will have will have drums no bass but it'll have some it'll have a drum part in it and then that's going to take you with the ri- following along with the riser is going to take you up to a point then when you snatch those drums out you're going to drop the energy again but you're going to continue in an upward motion because you're going to have a riser that is the length of the entire bridge and once you get there you'll be able to hit an another drop which is again it's going to be completely different from drop one and two um actually i don't think i played this far in the song so let's listen to that in the trap trapping to increase capital in the trap trapping to increase capital in the trap so for for drops three and four it's the same idea of drop one and two where drop three you'll have more of the traditional trap instruments and then drop four you go back into your synths and that's and that's really kind of uh, kind of how my whole theme plays out um for this type of vibe uh just 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 being more of a hip-hop producer you know i'm i'm not really uh you know really big on like on, on like programming these side chain synths and doing um a lot of a lot of different um intricate vocal leads and things of that nature so the point i'm getting at is it, it's complete you can inject your own style into this format if it's if it's something that you're interested in doing because it it it'll open up um opportunities for you because it allows you to create instrumental projects that people can listen to and enjoy without a rapper um using formats like this it will it it, it will effectively tell its own story and people you know people are fans of this type of instrumental music especially when you add different vocal samples into it that gives it a direction and a course and a theme um and then that way you know if you're if you're a hustler you're not dependent on you know um mc lazy ass to you, you know to save up his 200 bucks to get on kabuki and and actually get his his cds pressed up you know what i'm saying or or, or to get on a social media and, and, and push you guys' project you know what i mean that th- this is something that you could do on your own um and just do it in conjunction with uh with you know with selling your tracks and um you know however else you have your business model set set up as a producer and it's super fun to do um if you head over to studio one tutorials.com i'm gonna go ahead and do a way more it's gonna be a multi-part um tutorial on how i made this track it's going to be coming up within the next few weeks so remember keep it simple don't be basic this is concrete zebra with craft master productions studio one tutorials.com don't forget to stop by studio one tutorials.com and pick up the eclipse trap soul drum kit